Blizzard Entertainment has just bought Spellbreak, and in proper AB fashion, they're gonna go ahead and close the doors, take that 100-man development team, and move it over to World of Warcraft. Stuff a little support into that franchise. Let us, the gaming community, get a BR Battle Royale that isn't a copy and paste generic clone of everything else we have over there in the Battle Royale department. Use spells rather than guns. It's over-the-shoulder third-person view like Fortnite as opposed to first-person like Apex Legends, Warzone, or PUBG. Graphical style is cel-shaded, so along the lines of Borderlands and Zelda, the Breath of the Wild. You can strategize with your teammates to coordinate and play off each other's elemental abilities to block off parts of the map and take advantageous positions to attack your enemies. It was a solid battle royale. And now we can celebrate that by the fact it's going to be unplayable in early 2023. Anytime we have a fun, unique game that breaks the mold, it is eventually going to have a dump lane upon its chest from one of the three companies, Activision Blizzard, Ubisoft, or EA, Electronic Arts. They are notorious for taking games that are genuinely fun and might not make the most money. You know, maybe they're not jam-packed full of loot boxes and in-game stores and cosmetics, which you can buy cosmetics and spell break, by the way, there is a store. It ain't really earning the, the top brass over there, the executives around the round table, it ain't really earning them those uh, shekels those buffalo nickels. Hey, let's go ahead and get the 100 men and women that were working on that game. Uh, and, uh, just get them over there at World of Warcraft. So like I alluded to during the slightly too long intro, I am a fan of Spellbreak. I only played it probably seven or eight times, but I had a genuinely good experience each time, whether I was playing solo or with friends, because it is different than virtually any other BR out there. As I mentioned earlier, using spells, not guns, it's third person, not first person, it's cell shaded, and the gameplay, the ebb and flow of combat, the movement is just different than anything we have. So as it is a little bit unique and different than every other game out there, let's go ahead and get it the fuck out of here. Let's go ahead and uh, move that development team over there to WoW. So it does make sense that they want to continue support. When I say they, I'm talking about AB, Activision Blizzard. They, they want to continue support for their fantasy powerhouse, but do they really need to dissolve the team of a small cult classic like Spellbreak? No. Activision Blizzard is a massive game development studio. Keep in mind, in 2021, they had 9,800 employees, two-thirds of that are in North America. So shit canning spell break and taking 100 bodies that were working on that title to now focus on WoW, I don't really think is going to make a noticeable definitive difference for the WoW franchise. But what it is going to do is close the doors on spell break in 2023. Just like when we got news that Naughty Dog was pulling off a small team from working on a new Uncharted game to work on a re remaster of Last of Us 1. I was actually not just upset, I was actually pretty livid when I heard about that. As somebody that is a fan of Last of Us, but more of a fan of Uncharted, basically just a Naughty Dog fan, period. It seemed like such a bonehead move. I actually dug into their numbers and figured out where they were allocating their employees and didn't make any sense. I had to really rack my gears and, you know, oil up the cogs to try and understand or fathom this big brain move. And it wasn't a big brain move. It was a low IQ play. And this seems like it is right along the lines of that. Sharing my screen, I'm gonna live in this little circle in the corner of the screen. I do have a couple of articles pulled up that will be cited or sourced down there in the description below as I do any time I cover any news in the gaming community or industry. Nine hours ago, we get this article from PC Gamer Mag. Spellbreak shutting down next year. Early next year, 2023. Then, two hours after this article, we get this bad boy, Blizzard acquires Spellbreak developer as it closes doors on the Battle Royale, with the subtitle letting us know that the 100-person team that works Spellbreak is now moving over to WoW. Now, the exact monetary value of this deal or acquisition of the studio is unknown. So here's what it seems like to me. Polariate, which is the team that works on Spellbreak, was going to shut down the game anyway, so it's kind of nice that this acquisition happened because they can just roll over to WoW, so they're not, you know, well, unemployed. Granted, the video game industry is absolutely booming. In fact, video games earn more money annually than movies, TV, books, or music. What was the Yeah, music. That's the last one, right? So video games earn more monetarily annually. It earns more money each year than any of those. Not combined, but one by one. So the box office with movies. So game developers, coders, graphic designers, audio engineers, they generally don't stay unemployed for long because there's always games being developed. There's always new software and even hardware being created to where if you have a skill set in the video game industry and you have a decent resume and are somewhat co 
coherent during an interview and know how to communicate with another human being, you probably won't have too hard of a time trying to lock in work, but hey man, who knows? And right here, they mentioned toys for Bob. I made a video about this topic when it occurred because it has got to be one of the biggest slaps in the face as a game developer. The entire TFB team or toys for Bob team, which created Crash Bandicoot 4, which in my opinion was a very good game, had basically been told you are never going to develop a brand new game again. You're never going to work on a game, period. What you're going to do is provide support for Warzone. So you went from creating brand new IPs, well, Crash Bandicoot's not a new IP, but you go from creating standalone titles, games, new games, to working on a Battle Royale plugin that was basically tacked on, slapped on as an afterthought. That's just got to suck, you know, knowing that all of your creative juices are going to dry up because you're not able to write scripts, you're not able to create stories or design new characters. You're pretty much just designing cosmetics for the Warzone store. We saw it in early 2021 when Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1 and 2 developer Vicarious Visions moved to supporting Blizzard games before eventually inevitably merging completely. So this particular piece of news I don't think is good for the video game industry or the community. The community, I know a ton of people personally that play Spellbreak because it's a good time and it's different. In a genre or category like Battle Royales, which tend to be relatively cookie cutter, the same formula copied and pasted, something like Spellbreak that stands out is good. But also for the video game industry, it's great that those 100 individuals are not going to be unemployed considering it seems like Spellbreak was going to dissolve anyway. But the fact that they are now just providing support to World of Warcraft, just like Toys for Bob is just providing support to Warzone as opposed to creating awesome new experiences for us. That's unfortunate. If you enjoyed the video, liking it helps it to get seen by more gamers. This information will reach in a system as well, which in turn helps me grow this little channel, which I do greatly appreciate. Subscribe for more content like this. I cover news in the gaming community and industry, tutorials helping you get set up streaming and YouTubing, as well as honest gaming product reviews, keyboards, mice, headsets, controllers, mics, chairs, etc. There are some hefty exclusive discount codes found only in the description of my videos and only for the audience here at Gamer Heaven. Check out Into the AM for some of the sickest looking and most comfortable cloth to ever grace my gaming giblets. If you don't want to be scorching your corneas with harmful blue light, check out Gamer Advantage, the only blue light glasses on the market that look sexy and actually work. If you're looking for a custom controller that'll blow the competition's tits back, AIM definitively has the best bang for buck or price to performance when it comes to Xbox, PlayStation, and Switch controllers. Nope, they don't do Switch, but they do do gaming mice. I said doo-doo. I have links to all my other platforms and socials in the description below. If you need a quick laugh or blast of gamer adrenaline, check my short form videos out at TikTok. To get in touch with myself and the stallions and stallionettes of Gamer Heaven, join the community Discord and check me out at twitch.tv where I go live every other leap year on a blue moon if it falls into an odd calendar number and my pH balance is on point. Just kidding. Starting June, I'm going to be live streaming a lot. Thanks for watching. This has been AK40 Kevin hosting Gamer Heaven and I'll see you tomorrow because I upload daily all the time, 60% of the time, sometimes, most of the time. Peace.